Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. That feels good to say. Welcome to the show. Yeah, it's been a hectic month, but I'm finally back in the studio yet again, and hopefully for quite some time. So um, yeah, let's jump into things. So a lot of crazy things have been happening in spoiler season, including a brand new exciting commander that I think a lot of players out there, well, a lot of people who like this tribe, I should say, are going to be really excited about. And yeah, there's a lot of different directions that you can go with this within that tribe. And uh, yeah, it's just a pretty cool card. Also talk about some other cards that I'm trying to catch up on as well. Some really exciting ones that have come out since uh, toward the end of yesterday, I believe. Uh, it's been, again, a hectic time for me, but thank you for bearing with me. It's good to be back. So let's jump into it. We've got Lord Skitter Sewer King, a 3-3 rat noble, a noble rat, yes, yes, yes. 4-2 in a black that says, whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. On top of that, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1 1 black rat creature token with this creature can't block. So it's a very simple commander. It's a very low to the ground commander. Again, just three mana. And it's like, hey, rats. Cool. That's basically all you care about. That's all you need. That's all you need to do. You just say, yeah, let's go rats, 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 rats. When rats come into play, you get those extra benefits. I should say other rats other than this one. I mean, at least once a turn, you're going to be exiling something from someone's graveyard. You know, going to combat with this, getting that rat token. A 1-1 one, one that can't block, that's okay though. And then being able to say, yeah, um, hey, you've got that self-mill strategy over there. you got the reanimator strategy. You've got flashback cards. Whatever kind of value players might have out of their graveyards, you can say, let's just get rid of that. So just additional nice value. Some free graveyard hate for you just kind of tacked on your commander which is nice and yeah this is a token generating engine for you to make you a lot of rats throughout the game which of course if you are going rat tribal with this which is probably the direction that you're going to go with it then yeah you've got a great resource to just make you a lot of rats sure they can't block that being said you've got of course got plenty of ways to pump them plenty of ways to really take advantage of them of course you know i think Marrownar is that the uh the one that is i think the current most popular rat tribal commander or one of them essentially that can basically be a kind of like a cranko in a way so yeah in combination can be great obviously this can be great in the 99 of you know rat tribal decks it can also be great in the as the commander of a rat tribal deck and you know include those other rat tribal pieces in it now with that being said of course you can go relentless rats uh, you can go rat colony you know you, uh, those are the cards i believe i think i said those both right they're the ones that you can include any number of them in the deck so sure just include all of those i think one of the two just cares about the names uh relentless rats i think that's the one and rat colony i think just cares about the number of rats so obviously one is gonna be more effective including with this one where it's like hey yeah sure you can count all the rats so yeah definitely a, a rat tribal commander of course i mean you can just include all the rat tribal pieces or of course with this kind of a commander that's just a token generating engine for you you could just go like aristocrats you could just go mono black aristocrats again really taking advantage of well, this trigger being able to make more and more rats while also just getting some, you know, inherent graveyard hate with it as well. And then just saying, yeah, I get a creature token every single turn. Cool. I'll sacrifice it for value. You know, I'll you know, drain you a Zulport Cutthroat. I'll, you know, get my Pillis Plunderer, you know, treasure tokens off of that too. You can get a lot of value just for sacrificing a single creature once you're set up that way. Of course, I can't remember which of the, uh, you know, these new, those new Phyrexian ones that like double up. Oh, one of them doubles up death triggers, so make sure you keep that in mind as well. Like Taste of Karlov, you know, essentially kind of, but just in mono black, the one that can, you know, get an indestructible counter on. You know what I'm talking about. Regardless, being able to go aristocrats, that can be a great way to go with this as well. And yeah, you can get a lot of value out of that. So yeah, very, a very exciting, you know, new rat tribal commander. And yeah, if you just a lot of people out there just love rats. Again, if because of the relentless rat deck, because the rat colony decks, because of rat tribal. Yeah, now you've got a new commander for that. And again, one again that just happens to have graveyard hate as well. So if you've got a friend that's got a reanimator deck, say goodbye to all of their great targets. So yeah, make sure you consider that. Now on this episode, I'm also just gonna be taking over, taking you over, taking you through some of the other cards that I've missed over the past day or so. So here we go. Uh, I think this one came up more recently. Bramble Familiar and a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this. This one, I think, is going to be a huge card. Uh, a 2-2 two -two Elemental Raccoon for just one and a green. It has tap for a green or pay one and a green. Tap, discard a card, return to its owner's hand. And this one has a very spicy adventure. Find the way for five green, green, sorcery, adventure. Mill seven cards, then put a creature, enchantment, or land card from one of the cards mill this way onto the battlefield. So this is just a low-to-ground, simple mana dork. Like, this is one that... 
Yeah, it's less efficient than other mana dorks for the most part, right? Obviously, most mana dorks that are in just green, you, know, you get your land of war elves, those types are essentially just, hey, one mana and they tap for a green. This one is, okay, I cost a little more. Okay, I cost one more, so I'm slower. I am slower. That being said, my upside is, hey, um, yeah, you can use me early for uh, mana, obviously, to ramp, but also you can also bring back to my ha to the hand if you, if you need to, so you can actually utilize that big piece. That, again, seven mana spell that can be huge. Now, obviously, you might whiff and you might not hit anything all that great. Again, it's creature enchantment or land, so you're pretty much guaranteed to hit something. I mean, unless you're playing an all artifacts deck with this, which you wouldn't be, uh, then, yeah, you're not going to hit that, but... I mean, you could hit, again, you're probably gonna play this in a creature tribal deck, I would assume. Not creature tribal, but it could be tribal deck. But, you know, a creature-centric deck. One that's just very, very heavy into creatures. I'm thinking Nikya, uh, essentially, that kind of a commander. Uh, Mael, uh, I guess you don't really hit this with Mael. But, you know, like, big creatures, big, just a ton of big creatures in your deck. Utilize this, you know, get something massive off the top. Get, like, a Crater Hoof Behemoth off the top. Get an Eldrazi off the top. Get, I mean, for enchantments, you get, like, Omniscience off the top if you got giant, uh, you know, enchantments and stuff like that. So, if not, you mean you hit a land, cool, you're ramping a little bit, but that's terrible for seven mana, obviously. That being said, obviously, this can go in a mill deck as well, you know, one that might have some big creatures in there, too. But, yeah, a really interesting effect, and one that, again, just kind of stapled onto a Mandork that, again isn't i wouldn't say again inefficient it's inefficient compared to other mandorks like you know land of elves and those there's only so many of those there's a like decent amount there's only so many of those but when it comes to you know what you're getting back you know two mana to get one back that's great you know for the most part but when it comes to mandorks there's more efficient ones but still this has that flexibility to be a big bomb spell as well so i think that's pretty huge moving on extraordinary journey enchantment for x uh, x x blue blue enters the battlefield eggs up to x target creatures for each of those cards its owner may play it for as long as it remains exile whenever one or more non-token creatures in the battlefield if one or more of them enter the battlefield or is cast from exile you draw a card spell triggers only once a turn okay wizards i don't know why you felt like you needed to add this ability triggers only once each turn i i don't I mean maybe hmm. okay we'll have to think through this okay help me out in the comments below please with your opinion on this Again, that text just kind of irks me quite a bit because I think Wizards overuses it when they don't really need to. And this didn't, I don't think needed that, I don't think this needed that restriction. Now this can be, you know, a, a semi board wipe in a way. It's kind of like a big bounce spell because yeah, you are exiling those creatures and the owner can play those creatures as they've been exiled. It doesn't say you can play without paying its mana cost. So everyone who gets their creatures exiled, this has to recast them. So it's kind of like you bounce them back to the hand. But also, hey, whenever one or more non-token creatures in the battlefield, if one of them and one or more of them, again, there's already a restriction there, one or more of them enter the battle from, from exile, you draw a card. It's really tree only once each turn. So it's just I don't know. Again, I don't know why that extra restriction was in there. If a player, you know, if, if you exiled a couple things from one player or you know, a couple things from multiple players, and they're playing multiple in the same turn, you're not getting extra benefits, but you're still getting some benefits, right? You're still drawing cards from that. That's nice. This is kind of like a board wipe slash card advantage, potentially. Obviously, you can take advantage of your own card advantage as well if you've got creatures entering from exile. Didn't say like, you know, when one or more non zone creatures, your opponents control into the battlefield from exile. So you can take advantage of that as well if you've got, you know, your own effects that can help you cast things from exile, like, you know, Cascade, that kind of stuff too. Uh, again, I mean, it's. A, I think it's all right. I don't think that it's pushed in any ways. I, I don't know if it's going to see all that much play. It's an interesting card. And it can be good in certain decks that, again, care about getting their own things from Exile. But you got to dump a lot of mana into those X, X values to actually get rid of a couple of things. Again, like, let's say you're putting six mana in total into this. That's like two creatures, right? So, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it, it's just, it's not... It's okay. Again, if you've got a lot of exile things on your own, like in a Cascade deck, might want to consider this. Although, getting it out with Cascade is not that great. Anyways, moving on. Ingenious Prodigy. A 0-1 human wizard with Skulk that costs X and a blue. Enters the battlefield, X counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Ingenious Prodigy has one or more counters on it, you may move a counter from it if you do draw a card. This is a very interesting card because this is very reminiscent. And again, thank you, MTG Goldfish, for translated version. This is a very interesting card because this is very reminiscent to, I think this is a spend card that is very similar where it's like, I think it's Aeon Chronicler. Let me know the cards if I'm wrong on that. But basically like, hey, okay, getting counters off, drawing through each turn, that, that can be great. Again, this can just be a, a giant kind of like delayed X draw spell. Obviously, it's if it's dealt with, not great. Uh, but yeah, and then you have, that, you have that factor where it has Skulk so you can get it out. You know, for a lower amount, if you really want to just get it through on players, Skulk is a hilarious, uh, not mechanic, but keyword. Can't be blocked by creatures of greater power. Uh, it's one that doesn't show up that all that much, but uh, yeah, if you want it to be small, cool, you can get through on players. Obviously, you can keep getting it smaller and smaller and smaller throughout the game. 
to draw more cards. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like a delayed X draw spell, which can be good again in an X deck, you know, a deck that, you know, cares about X spells, like those Hydra type decks, it could be a good one. So uh, it's kind of like a human wizard Hydra that draws cards too. So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Moving on. Likeness Ludo, this is a very interesting one. A 1-1 one, one Fairy Shapeshifter for blue, black that is flying. Tap, draw a card, discard a card, so loot. Pay X, Likeness Ludo becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with mana value X, except as flying this ability activates the sorcery. So you kind of like get rid of the looting ability. It's kind of, it's basically like Merfolk Looter, but with extra stuff on it, essentially, right? You've got the flying on it, which is nice. You have that looting ability, which is great. And also this kind of sets up that next ability, right? Where you can get creature cards in your graveyard and then you can make this a copy of them. Kind of like that Lazav uh, type, you know, deck essentially or Lazav type character, character, commander. You know what I mean? But being able to turn this into anything else, also having flying in this ability so you can keep changing it to whatever else you need. That can be good. I mean, this can work in certain strategies. I mean, any kind of a deck that wants to consider like a Merfolk looter could be considering this as well, as long as that is Demir, because yeah, having another looter is great. Being able to dig down through your deck, you can find ways taking more advantage of them, like untap effects, obviously, or, you know, just a thought reflection in play to double up your draw or to various ages insight, whatever the, you know, more expensive version is essentially. But yeah, being able to switch this out with other creatures, you know, you can turn this into a massive creature and get through. You can, and again, because of that flying, that can, you know, be detrimental for some creatures that, you know, oh, if it hits, cool, great. I mean, I'm just thinking of like Phage, right? You know, you discard Phage, get in your graveyard, make it a copy of Phage after you're gone through and just take out an opponent. So yeah, definitely an interesting card and one that, again, Fairy Tribal can consider it, obviously. Um, you know, any of those, you know, card, or any of those decks that might consider looting effects and that kind of stuff, you know. One's actually want to get things in the graveyard, you know, whether that's like flashback or, you know, reanimation, that kind of stuff as well. Moving on. Where Fox Bodyguard. Cool. A 2 2 Fox Elf Knight for one white white. I think Morrow actually uh, referred to this one in the teasers, a Fox Elf Knight. So that's cool. With Flash, enters the battlefield, eggs up to one target non Fox creature until it leaves the battlefield, and then pay one in a white sacrifice that you gain to life. So this one's interesting. So. I, uh, a while back, uh, made my, you know, Fiend Hunter Tribal deck, and uh, that that's kind of an, I like that concept, <laughs> that we're basically, you're just trying to get kind of like three Fiend Hunter type effects, where like the creature enters the battlefield, you exile another creature, then you have another creature that enters the battlefield that exiles another creature, and then they kind of loop once you get a third one in, and then you can get, you know, infinite ETBs essentially and win from there in many ways. This one, again, it specifically says exile up to one target non-Fox creature. It does not say that your opponent controls. The only restriction is that it's not a fox. Now, typically, you probably don't have any other foxes in play that you're going to be exiling, or your opponents won't have any foxes in play either. Now, obviously, keep in mind, you know, shapeshifter changelings. Other than that, though, typically, you're not probably worried about specifically a fox. I mean, unless, you know, foxes become a huge thing in this set and in upcoming sets. That being said, yeah, being able to flash this in, get rid of a creature temporarily, that's huge. Again, a great combat trick for you. That is fantastic. On top of that, you can choose when that creature comes back as well. So again, if you want to utilize this on one of your own creatures, maybe to save something, or again, to utilize its ETB, great, you can do that because you can sacrifice this. Gaining two life, that's not that big of a deal, but again, being able to just sacrifice when, when you want to, that is huge. So this is like a Fiend Hunter Plus, essentially. It has that restriction again, not a fox, but still. Like, how many times are you gonna be like, oh no, I really wish that wasn't a fox. I don't know, maybe against like a Tarian Mauler or whatever, but because that's a changeling, but still. Yeah, I, I like the design of this card. Again, thank you, MTG Goldfish, the Trinjade version of it. And uh, and yeah, again, that would be going right into Fiend Hunter Tribal. Next up, Spellbook Vendor, a 2-2 Human Peasant with Vigilance for one and a white. Not sure this one's a little more grainy. My apologies, but anyways, here we go. Being of combat on your turn, you may pay one when you do create a Sorcerer Roll token attached to a target creature you control. Control another roll on it. You put that one in the graveyard and chain creature gets plus one it has. Where this creature attacks, scry one. So being able to scry one, that is lovely. I mean, you can just, you know, spread out, you know, each turn is getting more and more of these out, just paying one mana. Now one mana, if you're trying to make that decision, you know, on, oh, I got this, you know, man, I got this four mana spell to cast, but I only have four mana and I want to still be able to activate this. Yeah, there can be, you know, some tension there to be like, oh no, like, but so you might miss out on this, you know, a couple times, obviously, but if you're in an Enchantress deck, potentially one that has effects that benefit you when enchantments come into play or, you know, considering the number of enchantments in play, I should say constellations, what you really care about, you know, like Eidolana Blossoms type effects where, hey, now all of a sudden Eidolana Blossom says, you know, every enchantment enters the battle for your control, draw a card. So you're just paying one mana to draw a card of combat as well on top of getting that, you know, plus plus one scry one when you attack. That's fantastic. And also all those other things I care about. Hey, the number of enchantments you have in play, like Tuvasa the Sunlit does, that kind of thing. So yeah, this one for Enchantress decks can definitely consider uh, it. Yeah, very, very cool. Moving on. 
I think this is the last one, actually. Not Dead After All. I love that name. For a single black mana, instant speed. This one is a common, actually, and I'm really hoping it's going to be budget-friendly. Until I have turned target creature control gains when this creature dies, turn to the battlefield, tetra on its control, then create a wicked roll attached to it, which is a chain creature gets plus one of this orbs from the graveyard. Each opponent loses one life. So, yeah, that's that's great. I mean, this is just yet another feign death type effect, it seems. And uh, Wizards are starting to make more and more of these, which I absolutely love. Feign death is basically this kind of effect where, hey, the creature dies. When it dies, it just comes right back. This is a great way for um, you know black decks out there to utilize these kinds of cards to really use and abuse ETBs. I mean, well, number one, to protect their creatures. If an opponent tries to take it out, it's going to die and come right back and also get you know slightly more powerful, which is lovely. And then also, yeah, I mean, you can use and abuse ETBs, LTBs, you know, like a Taysa Karlov top type aristocrat style deck, sacrificing a creature, but before you do, doing something like this to make sure it comes back so you get whatever ETB or LTB it had again. So yeah, a really good effect. I, I love that Wizards makes more and more of these because some of the Fain Death type effects are starting to get expensive, even though they're just like a, you know, a, a common even. So hopefully they keep making more, hopefully they're reprinting more. And uh, and yeah, there's different variations that they can do on these. And uh, again, again, a lot of decks out there can really utilize these, again, for protection and also for using ETBs and LTBs. And I think that was the last one. Yes, it was the last one. But uh, yeah, make sure you're staying to this channel for more exciting quick takes and spoilers. Gonna be doing my best to keep up as best as I can. Again, uh, many of you have been have been so great with bearing with me uh, with you know uh, my setup changing uh, while I was out of uh, you know, out of the studio. But uh, yeah, thanks for bearing with me. Comment below your thoughts on all these cards. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on. Start getting some feedback on some of the most recent episodes on if you liked you know me going through just more of the cards or you know some I, in my previous quick takes I was also doing you know the the budget buys the pricier picks for specific commanders so yeah let me know what your thoughts are on that but yeah trying to find a way to get back into the groove right now things are a bit hectic but I'm doing my best so again thank you uh, for bearing with me and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.